Hello and welcome to the Unholy Death Knight Mage Tower Challenge Guide. Our challenge today is the Imp Mother, Agatha. Compared with the other tower challenges, this is one of the more simple ones, and your toolkit as an Unholy Death Knight is amazingly suited for it. This challenge is only all of about three mechanics that cycle at different health percentages. Before I cover any legendaries that might aid you, let's go over the general strategy for what you will be doing. Phase 1. Before the pull, remember to use a potion. Typically a prolonged power potion, as that will give you the longest amount of usefulness, and cast your army of the dead. Immediately after the pull, Agatha will summon two or three imps. So long as these are active, she will be immune to damage. They don't have a lot of health, and can be bursted down with a combination of your virulent plague's outbreak and a death and decay. I took Epidemic for this fight, and that also helps if you're trying to do this quickly. There are two kinds of imps, an Umbral Imp and a Smoldering Imp. The Umbral Imps will occasionally teleport and send out these little shadow balls. Contact with them will slow you down, so don't get hit. The Smoldering Imp will cast fireballs that get more and more powerful the longer he's left to cast. Kill him quickly! Watch for Agatha when she spawns a Fuming Imp. This little bugger will focus on you, and when he reaches you, cast Plague Zone. You deal with this ad either by killing him, or running him to the edge of the encounter to detonate harmlessly. Your death grip can work as an interrupt on this guy, as will your sludge belcher's chain hook if you take that talent. After the imps go down, you have a small window of opportunity to do as much damage as you can to Agatha until two more imps spawn from the back of the room. This is what I'm going to call Phase 2. These imps will run towards Agatha and when they reach her, begin a channel that increases her energy bar as well as healing her. There are multiple ways you can deal with them. Either you use Chains of Ice to slow them down and kill them on their way as they travel, or you can use the same strategy we use for the small imps and grip them into one spot, Virulent Plague, Outbreak, Epidemic, Death and Decay, to burst them down. What I'm going to call Phase 3. Periodically, Agatha will surround herself with a shield and begin a cast of Shadow Bolt-like magic. These bolts do ever-increasing damage the longer she is in the shield, so it needs to be broken quickly. To this end, we save Apocalypse, your artifact skill, and use it when there are six or more festering wounds on Agatha. If the damage itself is not enough to break it, the extra help from your six extra army adds most certainly will. Occasionally, this shield will line up with the small imps from phase 1, so remember, as long as they are up, you cannot damage the shield. Once the shield is down, remember to interrupt her channel, as the shield breaking will not stop her, you will need to do it yourself. So those are the three main mechanics. Now there is one more left to be aware of. At varying percentages, Agatha will teleport from one end of the encounter to the other, and flaming boulders will start to be in play. Dodge around them and keep an eye out for which part of the encounter they're travelling in. These boulders only travel in a straight line, so you can look to see which side it lands on, move to the other, and wait for it to pass you. A single boulder might not kill you instantly at medium to high health, but they will stun you, and that can be the most annoying thing in here. With strategy out of the way, let's look at the talents you'll be taking. Row 56. Depending on your gear here, either Bursting Sores or Epon Fever. If your overall damage is low, you will take Epon Fever. This will cause your Virulent Plague to do more damage quicker, which is useful to you. If you're 920 or higher, I expect that your Plague damage will be high enough to take Bursting Sores. Row 57. Epidemic for Burst on small lads if you need it, such as myself at the time. Otherwise, Pestilent Pustules. Row 58. I took Unholy Frenzy for this row, but Castigator has its uses here too. Perhaps if you find yourself running around a lot and out of range of various adds, you can take Clawing Shadow. But between your Grip, Plague, Death and Decay, and a Talent in the next row, I don't see it being particularly desirable. Row 60. I took Sludge Belcher here every time. These adds die quickly enough for Asphyxiate to be all but useless, and if you're going to use it to interrupt casts, Death Grip and the Belcher's extra hook have a similar effect. Debilitating Infestation is only going to see use on the channeling adds, what Chains of Ice can take care of, or the double grips I've mentioned three odd times already. Row 75. Spell Eater I found the most useful in this row. 
Corp Shield might find some niche use, but if your Belcher dies, you don't have his grip on call, and the damage you can expect to receive is fairly well neutralized by a good death strike after you kill an ad, of which there are plenty. Row 90. Shadow Infusion or Infected Claws. Necrosis is fiddly, and you can find yourself overwhelmed by all the things you need to take care of, and not make the best use of it. Row 100. This one really comes down to just Dark Arbiter and Defile. Which one you pick is dictated mostly by the legendaries I'll cover next. Dark Arbiter is probably your best bet, especially if you have the requisite legendary I'll cover in the next segment. Otherwise, Defile. Done right and you will have 4-5 to five things in this pool at all times, and that damage is not tiny. Alright, so now let's cover your legendaries. There are eight different legendaries that could be of use here, so I'll only cover each of them very briefly. Pride Aznek gives you a shield. Worth it if you find yourself taking a lot of damage, good the lower item level you are, helps you survive boulders. Sefus, Haste and Movement Croc after interrupting. You can get some good use out of this and pairs very well with the Dark Arbiter talent if you can proc the haste first. Death March. Passive damage increased to Death Strike and Death Coil. Also reduces the cooldown on Death and Decay. Pairs very well with the Defile talent. Using this legendary all but necessitates that choice. The Instructor's fourth lesson. Bursting extra wounds equals more damage. That's about it. Might help you for Agatha's shield phase. Cold Heart. Chains of Ice would normally only see use on the channeling imps. But, by the time you use it, it will likely one-shot at least one of them due to all of the stacks it gives you. Also good for doing damage on Agatha's shield. Soul of the Death Lord. It gives you the Bursting Source talent, so it frees up Evan Fever, allowing you to take both. Kill Jaden's Burning Wish. Massive AoE bomb. Good for getting loads of adds down quickly. Also has a lot of good stats, and I think the highest strength value on any trinket, period. Oh dear lord. Tack Theratrix's shoulder pads. First try. Maximizes the effect of Dark Arbiter. Necessitates that talent choice, as Death March does for Defile. So here's a segment for some extra info. The Plague Zones dropped by the Fuming Imp I mentioned in Phase 1 have a slowing effect while you're in contact with them. This can be minimized either with a March of the Dead, or straight up ignored by an anti-magic shell. Though I'd save it for when small imps line up with the shield and Agatha's cast get more and more deadly. I have discovered since the kill video that Agatha encounter is actually in a sectioned part of Azuna, which means potions like the Light Blood Elixir and the Sylvan Elixir actually work here. The damage put out by a Light Blood Elixir is not tiny, and in fact might actually be more useful than a typical strength flask. The Sylvan Elixir, if you wait 10 seconds after use, gives you 10% to all stats, again, not tiny. Further, though it was not the case at the time I recorded it, if the command center is up at the same time the Mage Tower is, then the extra help provided by the Court of Ferrandus activates during the encounter. This takes on three forms. Whelplings that help attack, a rune that when you stand in it makes you do more damage, and meteors. All three are particularly useful, so where possible, take advantage of it. Once you achieve the base colour, you can unlock the other colours by killing Heroic Kil'jaeden in the Tomb of Sargeras, winning ten rated battlegrounds, and completing one of every Legion dungeon, naturally using only the tints for this weapon. It doesn't matter if you use the Heroic Kil'jaeden tint or the base tint, you will get the others so long as it is a Mage Tower weapon. It has been confirmed in a tweet by Blizzard that the recolors of the weapon will remain obtainable after Legion finishes. The base skin, however, will not. So get cracking. I myself have only done 22 of the 36 challenges, all recorded, all three mage specs already uploaded to YouTube. You can expect a guide for each of the other class spec combinations as I get to them. And that brings us to the end. If this video helps you, please let me know with a comment how. Perhaps throw me a like and also subscribe to see the next guide I make. Like I said, I have another 18 lined up, so there will definitely be more. I've left the unedited kill video to play at the end, so until next time, farewell. You are too late, hero.
Levia's power is mine. Using her knowledge, my minions will infiltrate the Kiran Tor and dismantle it from the inside. Even now, my Sayyad tempt your weak-willed mages. Your allies will surrender willingly to the Legion. But first, you must be punished for taking away my little pet. Attack, my pretties! No! What have you done? Four, three, two, one. Protect me, my children. I will give you the power. Four, three, two, no! one. What have you done? I will make you suffer. Protect me, my children. I will give you the power. Your persistence is annoying. No! What have you done? I will make you suffer! Four, three, two, one. Me, my children, I will give you the power. Your persistence is annoying. No, what have you done? Four, three, two, one. No! What have you done? Your persistence is annoying.
No! What have you done? I will make you suffer! Your persistence is annoying. Greetings. Satan. 